Um, why don't we just start off with a general question of how, you're, how you feel your team's preparedness is for tomorrow's big match? Yeah, it looked really good. We're, we're really excited to be here and um, we're, we're in a good position, so, so we're just really looking forward to the game. We've had two tough games now and we knew that the third one would be just as tough, so, so we just can't wait to get stuck into it. How about yourself, Steph? Yeah, the girls are preparing really well. Um, we had a really good session yesterday and all the girls look really sharp and um, the ones that needed to recover got their recovery in, so everyone's feeling really good and excited. I can start with questions right here. It, hold on, um, we just need a microphone. Yeah. Steph, Cheryl Downs from the women's game. You've been out on the turf. Does it play differently to Winnipeg? Um, it doesn't feel like it. That Oh, the turf here, do you mean? Yeah. Um, well, we haven't actually trained on it yet. We're training on it. Yeah, so we just trained on a practice field yesterday, which is pretty similar. <laughs> Another question? Right here. Uh, this is both for, for Alan and, um, and Stephanie. I, I know that both, neither one of you was actually there in 2011 when you lost to Sweden and were eliminated, but is this, uh, leaving aside the revenge uh, motivation, is this still a yardstick that you beat Sweden, you keep going? Is that that kind of a deal in the you know, progress for your team? Um, yeah, I think so. I think Sweden are an incredible team. Um, they're right up there with one of the best in the world and they have so many good players and obviously losing to them in the last World Cup, um, a lot of the girls were in the team that are in the team this year and it still is pretty at the forefront of their heads. So um, it would be nice to get one up on them, but in saying that we've got a, a new team as well and girls that weren't there. So we're just approaching it as this game. Yeah, look, I think it's definitely a yardstick there. Uh they're high ranking in the world. They've got some of the best players in the world. Um, so, yeah, definitely it's a good yardstick of our progress as a team. Um, I think everyone's seen that already, how far how far we've come in the last four years from the last World Cup to this World Cup. Uh, you know, the fact that we could compete well with America and Nigeria who, who competed well with Sweden and possibly should have beat Sweden the other day. So I think we've already shown that we're, we're a team up in the top few in the world and Sweden's a good yardstick to prove it once again. Next question right there. Yeah, one for Stadge. Um, teams in World Cups usually grow into great tournament teams. Obviously, you started off slowly, you had a great game, got the three points against Nigeria. Do you think this is another step, and, and do you think this team is improving as the tournament uh, goes along? Um, I, I still think it's early days to, to come up with that sort of storyline where we're improving when we've only played two, I actually. Deep down, I think we played really well against America and the football we played was exciting and exhilarating and attacking and, you know, I, I think I've said it before, on any given day, I think we could have won that game and probably had the better chances and more chances in America. It's just they're more clinical when they had to be. So it was probably the opposite against Nigeria. Um, you know, I thought we were the more disciplined, more composed and, and the couple of moments in the game of quality and there was probably four or five of them probably fell to us. So I think the best part against Nigeria... I'm not sure if you're aware, but it's the first has ever kept a clean sheet at a World Cup match. Um, so it's never done before in, in six World Cup attempts since 1995. Uh, so it shows the team is maturing. Um, even though we're an offensive team, we're extremely well disciplined and, and limited Nigeria to possibly, you know, two or three half chances and shots from outside the box. So good, good, um, good omens for us. The other, the other stat which we spoke about today with the team was so far in our group, we've had the most amount of shots on target. I think we're on a America's on eight, I think um, Nigeria's on seven and Sweden's on four. So when you look at the group, you know, we've kept our first clean sheet in history. We've had the most shots on target, so it just shows how we're progressing as a team. And if, if you keep those stats going over a long period of time, you end up winning more games. So I'm really pleased about that sort of stuff. Yes, before the next question, if we can have the photographers um, leave. Yes, next question right there. Stage, not just in terms of uh, the opposition, you've had great op opponents throughout the group stage, but also you know, with so much on the line and the mentality of it, is this the biggest test that the team's faced? Well, definitely this tournament, and every game is. And um, so, you know, you're playing a former World Cup finalist and third at the last World Cup and perennial heavyweight. So it's pretty much do or die for both teams. Um, if Sweden lose, they're potentially out of the World Cup and out of the Olympics, so they've got a lot riding on the game as well. 
Um, but so have we. You know, we could finish anywhere from first to fourth in this group still. So everything's up for grabs in this group and, and certainly we're not taking our foot off the pedal come tomorrow. Stadge, um, Tim Cahill, I think, offered a message of support to the, to the players. And uh, how important is it for you to get that support from, from not just him, but from the Australians back home for the way you play as well as a result? Oh, look, I, th I think we're, we're a football community in Australia and we're still an evolving one and a, and a maturing one. So the more support we all give to each other, the better it will be for our code back home. And, you know, Ange Postacoglu has been fantastic with our team. He came and spoke to our players before we left. Just to have that involvement and, um, you know, integration between the whole body is really important for us and, and to have that sort of collective team spirit and team harmony. So, look, we take great pride in that, but we know we're representing not just Timmy and not Ange, we're representing all of Australia and we're glad that they're supporting us just like we support the Socceroos every time they go out. Um, considering the, game, the way you guys have played so far, you've played a very good game against uh, the United States and then the next game. Is it tough not to get ahead of yourself? Because if you're able to get out of this group, this group of death, as they like to call it, suddenly you're in a pretty good spot to go quite a distance in this tournament. Yeah, look, I, I think I've said this before as well, so sorry if I repeat myself, but there's the old cliche where you take one game at a time, you know, and, and people use it so often because it's, it's so important. You know, if you get ahead of yourself, as you said, you, you start dreaming about things that, that might never eventuate. And, and certainly... As I said, we can still finish first, second, third or fourth in this group and, and that's a reality. Uh, so we've got to take this game as it comes and, and, and it's a tough game. Um, I'm confident we can beat Sweden, um, but you know, obviously on any given day anything can happen. So we've got a tough challenge ahead of us, but if we do get through the group, you know, I looked at Germany's game today and you know, they've been rotating their squad and, and putting different combinations of players in and having a look at the toughness of their group. You know, you know that they've only really played one tough game. So we get to the knockout stages, you know, we've been through three massive battles, uh, three massive games, which were all tough. And this young group, I'm sure, is just, you know, will mature and grow as the tournament goes on if we can make it that far. So anyone who gets out of this group, I I'm certain, will end up in the top two or four in this tournament. Steph, with, uh, as Stadge said, there's so much uncertainty lingering around, around this. You know, the trapdoor's still there for you, but first place is up for grabs. How do you deal with this... Um, from a mental point of view, and are there any nerves at the f heading into this game? Yeah, I think there's always a few nerves going to any World Cup game. You want to perform and uh, want to get a result for your country, and obviously this is the group of death, and um, as Stadge was saying, you can go from um, being extremely happy about winning against Nigeria, and then if, if you lose, you, you know, you can be on a flight home straight away. So um, we literally are just looking at this game and we're looking to get three points and then sort of we'll go from there and see what the other results are. But um, it's in our own hands, you know, if we win, we can get through and that's what we want to do. Next question. Yeah, uh, so far you have played against uh, two quite different teams and now you're up to a third. So, so how much do you focus on your own game and how much uh, do you adapt to, to the opponent? Um, look, we've got, we've got a playing style and structure in place and, and I'm sure you would have seen it already. Um, so I don't need to go into detail and that's sort of your opinion to take out what you want out of that. But, um, you know, we'll be playing the way we play, but obviously we still analyse the opposition and st see what their strengths and weaknesses are. And, and I guess the common, the common thread between all our opponents is that they've all had a strong offence. Uh, you know, the strongest part of their team's been up front. You know, when you look at Nigeria, they had Ashwala and Opranosi and Odega up front and... And uh, the young number 13 out wide, uh, the midfielder, she was fantastic as well, probably their best player. So America were the same when you got Abby Wombach and Rodriguez and um, who else played up front the other day. Um, you know, just their strengths are just so strong. A and then when you look at Sweden, their best, their best players are up front as well. You know, someone like Lotta Shalin and Aslani and, and Jakobsen, they're all just fantastic players. So I guess the common thread of all our opponents is that there's some really lethal uh, players in the attacking uh, opposition. So... We're working really hard to nullify that. And as I said, at the first game we've ever kept a clean sheet in World Cup history last game. So if Sweden are going to score, they're going to have to break down a good defence and then also worry about our attack, which is also electric and, and quick and mobile and dynamic and, and a real threat to any opposition as well. Next question, right up here. Coming from the side. For either one of you, you talked about the battles that the team has been through already just in the two games. How's the team holding up with injuries? We obviously want to see Polks out there, but it's not just a three-game tournament. It's much more than that. So what are your comments there? 
Um, at the moment, everyone's available for tomorrow. So, um, yeah, look, we'll, we'll, we'll select the team after training today. We've got a training session after this. So, um, yeah, we don't make the selections until we get through the training session. So, obviously, one position can affect the whole team, you know, in terms of moving players around. You know, when someone like Steph Catley can play nine different positions, you've got to wait until the final training session and then uh, we'll make our decision tonight. But everyone's available at the moment. Any further questions? Oh, behind you. Yeah, Sturge, you, you touched on keeping a clean sheet. If you do it again tomorrow, you're through. It doesn't, you don't have to rely on anyone to, uh, to do whatever. So does that mean that the, the mentality is going to be defensive? I mean, wh what do you do? To, wh what sort of team talk will you give to your team? Oh, I think you know the answer to the question. <laughs> yeah, no chance. No, we'll go out and try and win every game we can. Um, you know, that's, that's within our culture and within our philosophy and we're out to win the game. Uh, obviously, you have to be a little bit pragmatic and you have to, obviously have to be a little bit street smart and, you know, if, if, if it's nil all with two minutes to go, you know, we're not going to throw the kitchen sink trying to get a 1-0 win. Um, so we obviously have to be a bit smart, but there's no way we're going into the game looking for a draw. It's just not in our style, not in our culture and certainly not within the philosophy of the team. Next question. Uh, Steph, I think Shellen scored the last time you played in the, in the World Cup. How do you stop a, a player of that quality? Yeah, obviously you don't know um, sort of how she's going to turn up in the game, whether she's going to be a big presence or whether we can sort of nullify her early. Um, but we've got some really, really good defenders and coming off a game where we had a clean sheet and I think our back four in particular um, held strong and had a pretty good game. Um, we're going in with a lot of confidence and we've, we've done the research and we know what she's good at and um, how we can sort of nullify her, as I said before. One last question right here. Stadge, it's uh, the biggest game in terms of what's riding on the line uh, since you've been uh, at the Matildas. How do you feel? I just feel excited, you know. I feel excited at, at how well the team's done so far. Um, I feel like... We've started to play the way I want the team to play. Um, you know, it's an exciting brand of football. It's a positive brand of football. And, and I know if we take that mentality and that style of play into the future that we can, we can really get into the top two or three in the world, which is our goal. And, and this World Cup's the first step for that process. So, you know, going into tomorrow's game, you know, I don't feel any different than how I did before the American game. Um, there's good belief in the team. There's belief in the players uh, that, that they're as good as anyone. And I think, I think for a large part they've showed that already. Um, so it's just up to us to prove it once again. Um, but I've got full confidence in the team and in the players. As I said, we've got so many strengths in the team and, and so, many, so many different ways of scoring goals and being a creative team that I'm sure if, if we can keep our defence tight, we can be a threat to anyone. And I feel confident tomorrow and I believe we can really give Sweden a good run for their money. Thank you very much. The um, practice training will be at uh, 5.30, open for the first 15 minutes. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Steph. Good luck for tomorrow.